This afternoon, the CBC's continuing coverage of college basketball features the University of Victoria Vikings and the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. Hi, everyone. I'm Don Whitman. Welcome to Victoria, British Columbia, the beautiful island capital of Canada's westernmost province. I'm speaking to you from the McKinnon Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Victoria, where the Vikings, the leaders of the Canada West Conference, entertain their mainland rivals, the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. Last year, Ken Shields' Vikings surprised with a second-place finish in Canada West. This year, with five returnees and much more depth, the Vikings are leading the Canada West Conference with a record of nine wins and one loss. Ironically, that one loss was inflicted by the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds by a 62 to 58 score. Peter Mullins is in a rebuilding program at the University of British Columbia. His team currently occupies the number three position in Canada West. Mullins acknowledges that it will take time to mold his new talent into a unit. Well, our talent is not new, and it is a unit. I'm referring, of course, to Ted Reynolds and Jack Donahue. Thanks very much, Don. Just a couple of rookies here. As sort of the hometown guy, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome Jack Donahue to our telecast. Glad to see you looking so much better, Jack. And this really is sort of a classic confrontation. Mullins has been around for a long time against Ken Shields. That's right. Uh, they're, they're two old buddies of mine also. Peter Mullins was the national coach for many years and, and certainly gave me a tremendous amount of help, especially in the early years when I first got here. And Ken Shields played with the national team first year I was here. So uh, I'm really interested in watching it. It's going to be a great conflict. Uh, but uh, we have to, I guess everybody says, that Victoria is favored in this game. Yes, I'd have to say so. Just on manpower, we've got... Uh, I think the University of British Columbia should be outmanned, but you never can tell with uh, Peter Mullins. He's liable to come up with something brand new. Well, as one thing Peter said to us, one thing that is consistent with his new club is that they're inconsistent. And we're going to be back after this pause. This is our favorite dinner, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Every piece so tender, so finger licking good. Dinner's ready. We love the salad, the french fries, and the Grecian bread. Our favorite dinner. And thanks to the Colonel, it's sure easy on me. Dinner's ready at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Treat the family to Kentucky Fried Chicken tonight. Look in the pages of your phone book for the Scotch Chicken Villa nearest you. quiet Rocky Mountain foothills. There's natural gas, trillions of cubic feet of it. But finding it is not easy. Gulf Canada is exploring here for what are believed to be some of the greatest untapped natural gas deposits in Canada. That's Gulf Canada working on all kinds of energy for our future. Our name, your guarantee of quality. <laughs> One way for a performer to find a good part is to write it. This week in TV Guide, read how Gordon Pinsent has combined his talents as actor and playwright to form a new TV miniseries. In the same issue, TV Guide looks at another talented performer, Anson Williams, who plays Potsy on Happy Days. Our cover story this week in TV Guide. Now let's meet the starting lineups for the Thunderbirds and the University of Victoria. Doug Mosier, six feet, Victoria, guard. Chris Trumpy, six foot one, Victoria, guard. Mark Edelman, six eight, Vancouver, forward. Rob Chalik, six three, Vancouver, forward. Adam Urenko, six eight, Abbotsford, center. Uh, Peter Mullins, coach of the UBC team, 
I feel today uh, to beat Victoria, we're going to have to play some very good defense, and we're going to have to do our best to control the tempo of the game. Rob Paris, five foot eight, Victoria, BC, guard. Ian Hydeley, six foot one, Shawnee Lake, BC, guard. Bill Lowe's, six five forward from New Haven, Connecticut. Chris Hebb, six foot three inch forward, Prince Rupert, BC. Rainy Dalsetti, six foot eight, Sudbury, Ontario, center. Ken Shields, head coach, UVic Vikings. Uh, to beat the UBC Thunderbirds, I feel we'll have to play some sound defensive basketball, uh, prevent the ball from going inside, and if we can do a job on the defensive boards, get our running game in, in action, and then uh, see if we can get some easy hoops with that in and execute on offense. Just ready to go, the UBC Thunderbirds in their traditional blue with white and gold trim, the homestanding Vikings in white, and the Vikings have the basketball to get the game underway, and number 20 is Rob Paris, who will bring it up court for them. First shot of the game is by Paris of Beauty. Good tough man-to-man -man defense by UBC. Not going to do much about a 20-foot jumper, that's for sure. This is Doug Mosher, who wears number three and brings the ball up court. Good match up there with Rob Paris. UBC's got a little more height in their starting lineup. They've got two big guys over six foot seven in there. In and out. Spiking rebound, and here they come. This is Ian Heidley. In underneath. And right on top of the basket, but he didn't put it in, was Freddie Delsetti. The all-star six foot seven inch center of the Vikings. Number 12 is Chris Trumpy, top scorer this season for the Birds. Vikings are watching them very closely so far. We'll see if they change things around. In underneath. Big guy putting up Adelman. He's six foot seven. Excellent example of a give and go. They switched off and they dumped the ball right into the big man. That rebound grabbed off by UBC's Mark Adelman. He's a 19-year-old youngster. He's six foot seven, former high school star in British Columbia. Long one-hander, very short by Mosher. Dipped away, trying a fast break, and Chalik put our uh, so that Super Bowl. Paris couldn't get underneath that one. Number 12 for the Birds is Chris Trumpy. He had 22 points against Lethbridge in one of two games last weekend as UBC won them both. And back come the Vikings with Luce, their top gunner. Good, strong, three-man fast break. They kept the ball in the center of the court, drew the defensive man to him, and then dropped it right off. Excellent fast break. Four to two, the score for the homestanding Vikings. And we're just past two-minute mark of the first half of this game in Victoria. We've got a little pushing in there in that pivot position. They're both trying to get in front. And he called it on a defensive player, but it, it, we're going to see a few fouls if they continue to play like that. That referee is Len Anderson. His partner is Skip Standish. Number 12 for the Birds is Chris Trumpy. He's a Victoria boy, oldest man on the Bird team at 23. 21 is Adelman, very agile, big kid. BC went into a zone then against the out of bounds. This is their big man, number 25, Adam Urenko. Again, brought the ball inside. Peter Mullins wants to bring that ball inside, take advantage of the height. That long one-hander by Luz came off the rim, and the foul is called underneath the basket. The referee, the, the referee feels that the shot had not been taken. He's going to take it out on the side. That's the first foul of the game. And there's another beautiful one-hander by Paris. He's really uh, going to cause them a lot of trouble because they're trying to help out and get rebounds, and he's hitting from the outside. Going to cause uh, a lot of trouble with UBC. Keeps on hitting like that. It's pretty tough to defend against that kind of a shot. And Uvic checking very tough in there so far. Traveling underneath. Took they were little steps. I don't know why he had a pick on him, but not half as much. Three or four little ones like that don't make a big one. <laughs> this is Paris bringing it up. And number 30 is his bad Billy Luce. They expect points from Luce. 
Long one-hander. That was by Hebb, a Prince Rupert, British Columbia boy. Trying it again. He's the fellow with the beard. And uh, no basket. The foul was again Adelman. The problem, of course, is the, is the build-up of fouls. They've got a UBC has got to keep that size in there, and if they foul too much, we're going to be playing with substitutes. Another beauty by guess who? Rob Parrott. Looks like a smart coach. It's 8-4 to four for University of Victoria. Time clock says 19 seconds. Lots of time for UBC. In underneath, and that is Doug Mosher. Good patience, and they worked that ball around, got exactly what they want with about four or five seconds left on that time clock. Well, as long as he's got the hot hand, they're going to let Paris shoot. I think he's the, he feels better than anyone else on the court. It's a good idea to let him take the next shot until he cools off a little bit. UBC is not getting that type of shooting so far. And again, the call here is against young Adelman. He's a youngster. Only 19 years of age, a former Vancouver basketball star in high school. He was fighting for a position and just couldn't get it and ended up pushing to get inside. Vikings are working Hebb, who's six foot four, a husky lad in the middle. Their big guy is Rennie Dolcetti, six feet eight. He wears 33. Well, there's Paris has missed two in a row now, so maybe somebody else will start shooting. This is Luke, and Luke will start hitting now. He's averaging 21.4 points a game. Luke is also doing an excellent job on Prince Trumpy, the uh, high scorer from UBC. And here he's got him, uh, just really causing him a lot of trouble bringing that ball up. Doing a good job defensively. 10 to 6, the Vikings leading, approaching the five minute mark, first half. UBC having trouble getting that underneath, but there again is Doc Mosher, and he's hit two for two here, his last two, and closed it to one basket, 10-8. Victoria's got to stop that, or else they're going to have trouble. Uh, I don't think UBC wants to shoot outside. That's Big Dosetti. Rough going in there, but they finally got that offensive rebound and pop it in to get a four-point lead back again. Did a good job. Got that ball back twice for them, and then got that finally got that basket up there. Very quick is Bob Perrin. Here's the Prince Rupert flash fading away, and Hep dropped a nice fadeaway. Good. They want to run. BC wants to play a little bit more control game. Victoria's out playing them all over the court, trying to speed up the game a little bit. Looking for exactly what happened in. Turnover. Very noisy crowd here in Victoria. Great rivalry between these two schools. UBC, the very big mammoth school, of course. New Vic with a great basketball team under a fine coach, Ken Shields. Harris driving again. No. He's not going to get through that maze on his side, I don't think, Jack. No, that's like running into a mountain. But he did get what he wanted, which was, of course, the foul. Got them to grab on the way in. Uh, you notice as soon as that whistle blew, he threw that ball up. He looked for the two shot foul. That, that driving, actually, Ted, along with the outside shot, every time he hits an outside shot, they've got to play him a lot tougher. And therefore, that brings them up on him and enables him to drive a lot, a lot better. You know, his 10 points, this fellow Rob Paris, the team has 16, so he's doing his job at work. And look at this, his ball game so far going all the way, no. Yes, he did put it up. Loose gets that rebound. He's a basketball player, that kid, Jack. That's right, real hustle basket. Peter, Peter Mullins got a timeout, he's got to get it. The game got out of hand. Uh, Peter tried to get a two baskets to go and couldn't get the attention to the player. Well, I think we're going to try and get Don Whitman to talk to the mascot of this Viking team. They are really fired up. They've got a, their own Viking out here, and I think uh, Don is going to talk with him. 
Okay, Don, take it away over there with the Vikings. This is Jim Hubbard. You think the old-time Vikings would have enjoyed this game? Oh, great stuff, great stuff. Wiping the birds right off the face of the earth. No Jim, problem. How long is that voice of yours going to hold up? First weekend, anyway. You do it every home game? Yeah, I try that, yeah. It looks like you've been in a few battles with yeah. him, too. That's some beating these basketball players up. No problem. Let's get them, get them psyched up. Give them a shot over their head. Well, I'll tell you, you really get these folks psyched up here at the University of Michigan. We're just starting to fight. Don't hit me with that thing. Okay? Oh, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Jim Hubbard, who is the self-appointed cheerleader of the Vikings. Okay, Chad, back to you. <laughs> Who's excited? Nobody's <laughs> excited. <laughs> Birds putting the ball in with a bad pass that uh, Jolik had to reach for. One-hander. Somebody's pushing underneath there. It's a UBC foul. I couldn't see exactly who they, they'll tell us who uh, they called it on. Here we get a good look at that foul. Here we come down. Shot goes up. You notice the defensive player did a great job of boxing out, causing the offense to causing the foul. That official is uh, Skip Standish, Victoria Chap. Trumpy putting the ball in. Trumpy throws it to Bill Burson, number 11, first substitute for the UBC Thunderbirds. UBC goes into that zone for the out of bounds to protect for the layup. And then I guess it looks as if they stay in it until they get the ball back. That rebound was by Rennie Dosetti. And that is Chris Hess. We got two guys hit that on there. Right. That's, that's some good shooting. The only loss of the season for the league leading Vikings was to UBC. And obviously they still remember that. There's the big guy, Adam Yurenko, biggest man on the court, in underneath. That's only his second shot, and that one didn't go in, and Dolcetti took the ball away from him. Here they come, three on two, the classic, and the man in the middle was loose. They did everything right except put the ball to. That's right, you got to finish it up, but they did an excellent job. Looked like a clinic out there. Dolcetti up and over. Dolcetti went over the top of Yurenko. Got that little uh, jump hook and, and stuck it right in there. 22 to 8, they're out in front. And we played only eight minutes of the basketball game. Schalich and Burzens running into each other. They don't have anywhere near the composure right now that the Vikings have. Fighting in there for that rebound. Jump ball. Peter Mullins over here doesn't look too happy. I'll tell you, his, his, his team has just been pushed right out of there. He's got to do something to stop them from getting blown right out now. Got to get control of this game right at this time. 16 years as head coach of the University of British Columbia, during which time he's brought them two national championships. But he knows he's got a big rebuilding job to do here. There's one of the guys he's counting on, Mark Adelman. That, that's a good start to a rebuilding, but uh, knowing Peter, he wants to be in this ball game. He's not worried about the future, not yet. It's nice to have those young players. Well, he's got the ball back again. You got to make him feel a little bit. He'll stay coaching a little longer if he wins some games. I'll tell you that. I know him, Peter. But uh, if you if you're in this game long enough, I guess you, it, it's it's like being a sports announcer. You know, I think you got to be smart enough to be able to do it, and then dumb enough to think it's important. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Adelman out here, 23 is Janowitz. They're getting their hands on rebounds but aren't able to do it. Here's Luce. Billy Luce from Connecticut. He is a totally dedicated basketball player. I think I recruited Billy Luce when he was in high school. When I was down in the States, I was at Holy Cross College and recruited him. Tried, they tried Dolcetti and number 20 tried a trap in the corner and uh, did a good job on it. Just got a little too aggressive. But uh, it was a very good idea, except they, they did foul him. UBC have already substituted a couple. Now the Vikings are sending in Craig Higgins, number 10. There's their coach. He used to play for Peter Mullins at the University of British Columbia. Well of a job. There's Delcetti going out for a little rest. He's done a good job rebounding for them and 
put in that jump, you know, that long jump hook. We're in the zone again. New Vic in the zone to protect against the layup on the out-of-bounds play. Cody directing traffic, and that one's good. And the margin is 12 points. Anytime you're playing a zone, you've got to keep the ball away from the foul line. And UBC has brought it in there a few times now and gotten some points. UBC rebounding. Mickey Welder is their number 14. He's from Kelowna, British Columbia. UVic changing defenses a lot now. And uh, uh, I think it's confusing the UBC a little bit. seem to be hurrying their shots a little bit. There were still 12 seconds to go in the 30-second clock when they put that one up. UBC putting the ball in under the offensive basket. They've got to remember, they've got a long time to play in this game. They cannot afford to panic now and let it really get out of hand. They've got 12 points, but uh, it, it matters what happens at halftime. Not right now. They've got to get right back in the game. Ten seconds, nine now. Eight seconds, seven. Looked up the shot, but nowhere near Tough the shot, right? They, they didn't time that very well. But the idea to control, I think, is what Peter Mullins works right now. There was Woo. Harris driving through again, but he didn't hit foul. That's a, a pretty good show right out there. He, Drive, here we go, we've got it right here. Get a good look at the shot, looses up, gets whacked right away. When you rebound offensively, you really put that defensive team at a, a distinct disadvantage. They really don't have an opportunity to get any kind of position at all. Be a lot of foul shooting going on this weekend. The last uh, week of basketball week, the National Basketball going on, and I hope we see a lot of those. That was Luce putting his second one in to make it 25 to 12 for Victoria. Steal here is by Ted Anderson. Full court press has, has, has helped you, Vic. They wanted to do it. Ken Shields talked about it just to make the game speed up. So they've gotten the ball three or four times out of it, which is a bonus. Now the big guy, Yurenko, finally hauls down a rebound for UBC. Moose is a better shooter than that. Uh, I really feel he, you know, that's his shot. He wanted it. He's going to make a lot of it. Unable to hang on to that pass with Chris Hebb on the pass from Luce. Bounce pass, bounce pass thrown with forward spin on it, which that one did, is really tough to handle. A lot of players don't realize they put a pass in a crowded position like that with the players going full speed, they've got to take a little bit off it. It's easier to do it from here than out there. Well, they were trying to set uh, Jim Cody up for that shot. It took a lot of work, but they did it. They did, did a good job. I, got, I thought, looked there for a second as if they were afraid to shoot it, but now you can see where they were actually looking for a little better shot. He beat out two guys. He beat out Frank Janowitz and Adelman to get that shot up. He was going to get that. He was hungry for that basket. Just pushed his way right up in there. Good strong move. He's a good player. They tell us that that one game that the Vikings lost, which was the UBC, over in Vancouver, as soon as they arrived back on campus from that, Luce was out practicing for two hours before he even went home. That's the type of guy he is. Well, I'll tell you, that, that's how you're going to get to be a great shooter. You know, we've talked about shooting on keynotes, and uh, we're going to run into a couple of good shooters and, you know, spend some time with them. But, boy, it's not a thing that, you you know, you learn by talking about it. You've got to get out there and put that ball in the basket. Number 22 for the UBC Birds is Mark Sessions of Vancouver. And they put in four new guys since the starting lineup came out. Full court press again. Put, put in, speeding the game up, putting a lot of pressure on UBC, and, and they don't want it. That was Paris who came down for the white-clad Vikings with the rebound. And that, 
once again is Billy Luce. That's um, Billy Luce. Get at it. You know, that's, uh, I've seen him take that shot. High school as well as here in town. Luce now has nine points in this first half. His team leading 31-14. Actually, here we had a pretty good play, Ted, on that. The defensive player got a foul called on it, but he was in there trying to help out for that dummy pass. The pass was thrown over the defensive player. Uh, good defensive play, and I, I don't think anybody's going to complain about that call. Number 12 is Grant Boland, who's come in for Victoria. Another substitute. They're leading comfortably 31-14. UBC working that ball around. Bad pass, entry Arenzo threw it right into the hands of a Viking player. Here comes Craig Higgins. Craig knows where that basket is. He just took it and went right at the basket. Good strong effort. Six minutes and 50 seconds left. That's the score. Big kid again. Adelman, he has shown flashes, Jack. He has. If they can get him the ball, they don't get him the ball enough. And uh, you, Vic, has done the changing defenses and the pressure has kept the ball away from underneath. Every time it's been brought inside, UBC has done a pretty good job. Here's our friend Luce. Took that one a little bit off balance, but uh, except for you and I, I don't think there are very many people out here that are perfect. I mean, uh, entitled to a mistake or two. This is Cody. Very good dribbler. Well, trying to get that ball in underneath to one of their two big men, and that's what they're not being able to do. UBC is substituting again. And they, they tried. They just over-tried it right there. Okay, there's a timeout. It's 33 to 16 in the first half of this game for Victoria with five minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the first half. For over 50 years, Sid Silver has provided superb formal wear for the entire wedding party. Today, the bride, groom, maid of honor, bridesmaids, best man, and ushers all make an elegant wedding picture in perfectly styled, superbly fitted formal wear from Sid Silver. Before your big day, come and see us at Sid Silver Formals, 500 Young Street, just above college. We'll look after you. Hi, I'm Barb McLeod, host of Time For You, weekday afternoons at 1.30. I get together with guests from all walks of life, including well-known Torontonians, to talk about things of interest to us all. In fact, I'm never quite sure what I'll be doing next, learning to cook, discussing superstitions, or finding out what it's like to be an epileptic. Whatever I do, it's different and it's interesting. So join me, won't you? That's 1.30, weekdays, on Time for... Play underway again is 33-16 as we start anew for the Vikings. Traveling call against the Birds. Put that ball a little bit off bounds and try to shuffle his feet a little bit, but the referee caught him. In. The pass really caused the walk more than anything else. More substitutions. Number 42 is Lauren Dakin, a six foot five, 22 year old from Terrace. Central British Columbia. They've always had good high school basketball. There's Prince Rupert in that area. Oh, I tell you, Prince Rupert, I, I've heard you mention it 35 times. Uh, besides the loose ball. Boy, that was, by the way, that was just a good shot off a good screen. Just simple, basic basketball. And, and I think right now, UBC is getting a lesson in basketball tonight, up, up till right now, but we've got another half or so. Big lead in this one for the Vikings to get another steal. This steal is by Craig Higgins, who's been playing really heads-up basketball. Everybody who's been out there for the Vikings has. And UBC comes down with a rebound. That one was Bob Chullin. Number 11 is Bill Persons. 
He comes from Surrey, British Columbia, just outside Vancouver. Vikings getting that rebound once more, coming down with it. One of their shorter men, Grant Bolin. He's only five foot ten. And they've got their big guy in there again, but they said he missed that dive. Ben didn't make any mistakes about it. He knows what he wants. Good, that's where they're getting hurt off the board. Their big men can't get back in time for UBC. And here, in trying to bring the ball into them, they're having a lot of trouble. They're trying to push it in sometimes when they don't have a real good angle. The birds are putting one of their starters, Doug Mosher, back in. Going off, number 11 is Burzens, and number 14 is Jim Cody. Birds trailing 37 to 16. Much to the delight of the crowd here at the University of Victoria. It'd be tough to be a UBC rooter sitting up there tonight, that's for sure. I'll have uh, public execution. Chris Grumpy, who's been held pretty well off the scoreboard. Yes, they have done an excellent job with him, and he's a key player for UBC. If he makes those outside shots and loosens it up, they'll be able to bring it inside with a, an awful lot, you know, an awful lot easier situation, isn't it? There's a man who's been through this before, Peter Mullins. But he's had an awful lot of winners and uh, up and downs. Vikings with the basketball once more have a big lead. What's he calling? Go he's got a goal tenant. The signal he gave is that one of the players grabbed onto the rim. One of the defensive players touched the rim while the ball was up over the basket. And we'll get a good look at it. It's a good thing we've got a chance to check up on the referees. The ball is up there. Yes, we do. We have the defensive player with his hand in the net. Dolcetti uh, getting it a rebound. Defensive rebound. And again, they have a little trouble now putting the ball in the hoop. The last couple of shots haven't gone in. Right, a little over anxious, I think. They're, now I think maybe they've got enough points for you, Vic. And they're looking for a few points individually. It's not making that, that concentration that they need even that close to the basket. Good, good one, Ander, there. That was by uh, Chris Trumpy, who they expect to get points from. He's their top point man so far this season. They've done, Uvic has done an excellent job with Trumpy again, and that's, that's one of, been one of the big problems for them is that he hasn't had a chance to get loose. Uh, loose had him earlier in the game and uh, really shut him out. Here's Rob Paris who got the whole thing going in under to Dolcetti. Call yeah, it. yeah, again the foul. There's not much you can do about it. He got one, two, three shots at the ball. Uh, probably could have had a foul call on, you know, any one of those rebounds. Uh, it's such an important part of the game, rebounding, and especially offensive rebounding. At the foul line, number 42 is Lord Dakin. Big point men so far. I have Rob Paris and Billy Luce for the University of Victoria. Dakin put that one in. Foul shot. Make it 40 to 18, a 22 point lead. Full court press trying to get that game going fast. The kind of game that UVic wants to play. Only two minutes and 18 seconds left in this first half as the Vikings come back. They've got uh, Chris Hebb out there now in place of Rennie Dolcetti, who's having another rest. This is Hebb. In underneath, loose. He got slapped around a little bit, but he put the ball through the hoop. I don't think he noticed. He's a big, healthy young man. Took it back. That's what UBC wants to do, bring that ball inside, and then UVic did it this time. Luce has 13 points in this game now. Oh, there's a steal and a basket by Bob Chollick. Make it 42-20. Mistake. He hasn't made many mistakes, Mr. Paris, but when you got that ball out of bounds, you can't throw it back in blind. Uh, Luce again. He now has 15 in this first half. He's come to play, that's for sure. Twenty-four point lead. 
Good hoop by Bob Cholick, who's been shooting well since he came in there. And uh, Luce is guarding him. Luce did an excellent job with Trump. He's having trouble guarding that young man, though. Vikings ball. And timeout is being taken. Well, we've it's got 44 to 22 for the University of Victoria on their home court over UBC. Let's go over to that huddle and see what Peter Mullins got to say over there. It's pretty tough when you're down by 22 points with the last minute of the first half to really get too fired up on the bench no matter who you are. But Peter's pretty, become pretty philosophical through the years. He used to really get up and roar on that bench. And he can still do that on occasion. I, I don't think this is the time. It, it, oh. The players are working real hard. Peter realizes that there's no sense he's kicking them now. They're down and they need a little bit of encouragement. I'm sure that when he gets in there in the locker room, he won't be scraping knees. He'll be trying to build them up a little bit, get them back out here, and salvage as much as they can for the second half. 46 seconds left. There's Big Yuremko, number 25, finally getting to use all that six feet eight height he has. That's Hyde Lay over there in the corner. Hyde Lay with a one-hander. Yuremko got his hands on the rebound, going up with Chris Hemp. Offensive player following the ball, looking for those offensive rebounds, which have been so good to them, and fouled underneath the basket. Okay, we're going to be back for the remainder of play in the last half minute of this after this. This is the only way we do chicken at Swiss Chalet. Barbecue it over charcoal. The crisp outer skin seals the full flavor in so the chicken cooks in its own juices. Our French fries are made from fresh potatoes. Our sauce is zesty. It's a good deal. Swiss Chalet barbecue chicken. You can take it home if you like. But we'd like to see the smile on your face. At a time when more and more things are becoming more and more alike, CN would like to introduce you to a chain of hotels that aren't the same. At CN, we feel that many travelers are looking for something distinctive when they're away from home. We also feel that our hotels lend a welcome charm and grace to the cities in which they're located. So much so that we consider it our responsibility to maintain this tradition wherever we can. But that doesn't mean turning them into museums. Not for a minute. In fact, we've spent more than $20 million over the last few years to keep our hotels young at heart. We've put today's spirit in traditional settings. It's a good combination. It's also good business. At CN, keeping Canada on the go is a business as well as a responsibility. When you buy a do-it-yourself product from the shelf, you're taking a real chance. Once the purchase is made, you're on your own, whether it's the right one or the wrong one. There is a better way, Homestead Plumbing Warehouse. They have products on display like other retail stores, but they've got something much more. Experienced plumbers on staff. That way, you know you've made the right purchase. And if the job turns out to be more than you bargained for, simply call Homestead for a service call. Now, isn't that a more sensible way to do business? 44 to 24 for the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds at the end of the first half, which went very, very quickly. And they were led, of course, early on by Rob Ferris, who had 10 of their first 16 points. And then their big gunner, Billy Luce, started to hit. And we'll have first half statistics, of course, a little later on during halftime. 
44 to 24 at halftime here at the University of Victoria. Let's go to Don Whitman. Thanks, Ted. Whether an avid follower of the sport or just a casual fan, I'm sure you'll agree that Jack Donahue's keynote series is both informative and entertaining. And this afternoon, the national team coach will discuss the skills of ball handling and three-man plays. We'll also watch the highly skilled University of Victoria gymnastic team in a display. Jack Donahue will be along with the highlights of the first half, and we'll take a look at what transpired in college basketball during the past week. We'll be back in just a minute. Wednesday night on... For over 50 years, Sid Silver has provided superb formal wear for the entire wedding party. Today, the bride, groom, maid of honor, bridesmaids, best man, and ushers all make an elegant wedding picture in perfectly styled, superbly fitted formal wear from Sid Silver. Before your big day, come and see us at Sid Silver Formals, 500 Young Street, just above college. We'll look after you. Proctor Country in Huron County, Ontario, where Country Canada filmed the farming life cycle on the Proctor Brothers' mixed farm. This is where corn and grass are converted into meat by chickens, pigs and cattle, and the realities of birth and death are faced every day. Farming in the raw at Proctor Country on Country Canada. Tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 destroying poverty endured by half the people on earth. These people desperately need help, and CARE can provide that help. With your contributions to CARE, backed by their willingness to work, here's what happens. Families are fed as the men build roads, modest homes, and the women work in the fields growing food. With a small clinic, a feeding center, and their first school, at last, these children have a chance to live and grow. But many millions all over the world still need help. Send your dollars to Care of Canada, 1312 Bank Street, Ottawa, K1S 5H7. Keynotes today, pivot play. Let's look at a three-man play here using a guard, forward, and the center. Ball goes in, he runs what we call an up block, takes that good jumper from the sideline. Great defensive play, good concentration by Riley shooting the basketball. Defensive man is overplaying the corner man. The ball still gets into the corner. Good overhead pass. Man is going to go out and set a screen for Martin Riley. Riley comes hard off the screen. Watch the concentration now. The defense is trying to get at him, but he gets up over the defense, shoots the ball, and we've got our basket. That defense causes problems sometimes. They don't always do the expected. This time, the defensive pivot man will try and take that shot away from Riley. Ball goes in. The screen again. Defensive man attacks Riley. Riley hands that ball off, and we've got our two points just a different way. Again, the same play starts off the same. The defense changes our mind because on this the defensive player goes after Riley look at the concentration the pass the concentration on the pass and the stuff we're back in style talk about having fun here's a young man that's not only fun to watch but has fun every time he picks up a ball Bill Robinson from British Columbia Billy come on out and show him what you're doing whenever you're practicing ball handling it's important to remember you do not need a gymnasium you should practice ball handling away from the gym, at home, any chance you get with any type of ball you get. Some of the drills you can do are these. You can also walk with the ball. If you have a big area, you can put the ball through your legs, move with it, turn with it, anything.
Anything you do with a basketball will help you in any type of basketball game or basketball situation. That may be easy for Bill Robinson to say, but for most of us, handling the ball with the wizardry that he displayed takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. That is very obvious. Next week, Jack Donahue is going to deal with shooting, and who better to demonstrate shooting skills than the high-scoring forward of the Wilford Laurier Hawks, Lorne Killian. We're also going to take a look this afternoon at a gymnastics display, a very talented group from the University of Victoria, their gymnastic team. great deal of fun while entertaining the crowd. The group includes Dave Bibby, Dave Siddle, Brent Scott, Rob Gatehouse, Richie Wood, Patty Burris, Diane McPherson, and Jill Weinberg. The repertoire this afternoon includes a lot of jumps, dives, both single and double somersaults, Somersault with twist. the acrobatic skills of the University of Victoria gymnastic team. Well, this past week has been a very busy one in CIAU basketball activity across the country. Let's go back to last Saturday. Of course, our telecast last Saturday originated from Carleton University in Ottawa, and Carleton didn't have too much difficulty as the Ravens clobbered McGill 103 to 68. Well, on Saturday evening, the University of British Columbia defeated Saskatchewan 78-54. Victoria defeated Lethbridge 103-75. And Calgary beat Alberta 82-63. Now this avenged the loss from the night before with Dave Price hitting for 21 points. Lakehead over Regina 75-63. Winnipeg beat Brandon 75-73. And York defeated Ottawa 106-72 as Lorne Ramatti had 21 points. Unfortunately, he also twisted his ankle in the second half of that ball game. Queens over Ryerson, 74-72. Western beat Guelph, 79-63. Windsor defeated Waterloo, 77-69. McMaster over Brock, 88-68. And St. Francis Xavier, 100. UPEI, 74. As five players hit double figures. Acadia beat Dalhousie, 72-61. Now on Sunday, St. Mary's defeated Prince Edward Island, 96-85. Moving on to this past week's action on Tuesday, McGill rebounded from that loss to Car Carleton and in the Quebec Conference defeated Concordia 84-77 and Bishops defeated Three Rivers 112-64. On Wednesday, it was Toronto over Ryerson 83-51. Waterloo beat Western 86-66. Tom Fugidi had 18 points. McMaster beat Laurier 85-77. David Roser had 31 points for the winners and Lorne Killian had 33 for Laurier, 31 of those points in the second half of the game. St. Francis Xavier beat St. Mary's 78-74. In a losing effort, John Brown had 35 points and 20 rebounds for St. Mary's. 
Now on Friday night, that's last evening, a postponed game. Saw Concordia beat Three Rivers 103 to 87. And Lethbridge playing very tough, lost a close one to Calgary. The Pronghorns 83, Calgary 86, as Calgary remains in second spot in Canada West. Victoria beat UBC 86 to 56. Saskatchewan upset Alberta. Lakehead beat Winnipeg in a close one, 83-82. And Manitoba still unbeaten in the GPAC, 99, Regina 59. Guelph beat Windsor, 95-85, as Henry Vandenberg had 32 points. And Laurier defeated Western, 94-78. Don Whaley, 29 points. And Lauren Killian, 28. For Wrenchin over Carleton, 79-73. They had a bit of a hay rube in that game. That involved two of the star player, players, Barry Cutler and John Love. And uh, the two coaches, Richie Spears of Laurentian and Pat O'Brien of Carleton. However, uh, no real damage was done, just a lot of shoving and a rather heated exchange. York over Queens, 84-57. St. Mary's beat UPI, 85-73. Ted Upshaw was injured as Acadia defeated Mount Allison, 101-60. Upshaw was the outstanding player in the Nova Scotia tournament a couple of weeks ago. And Dalhousie beat the University of New Brunswick, 172, as Robert Fagan had 33 points. So as I said, it has been a busy week. Some surprises as well, and the standings across the country. Manitoba is still ranked number one, and Acadia number two, with York ranked number three in the nation. We'll continue with more of our halftime show right after this. Mondays are better than ever on CBC when MASH joins the Monday Night All-Star lineup starting January the 30th. I plan to take a long bubble bath. Preferably with a nurse who has her own car and doesn't live with her folks. Then it's front page challenge as the always well-informed panel tries to guess the mystery names behind the headlines. Followed by super special, super entertainment starring some of the biggest names in show business. MASH, front page challenge and super special. Monday nights on CBC, January 30th starting at 8. On CBC Saturdays. Here's the first. He's gone! It's Hockey Night in Canada, every Saturday on CBC. All the action, the slow motion replays, the background information on the world's fastest game. Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. I'm Roy Bonestell. In two weeks, the Anglican bishops of Canada will be meeting in this room, struggling with the problem of homosexuality and the church. On Man Alive right now, we're preparing a report to the bishops and to the Canadian people. What are our attitudes toward homosexuals, and what should they be? Is it right for a Christian or a Christian minister to be a practicing homosexual? Watch The Gay Christian on Man Alive, Monday night at 10.30 on CBC. CBC Sunday. At 7, we present the first of five new chapters of A Gift to Last based on Gordon Pinson's award-winning special. Followed at 8, Larry King teaches Kathy the finer points of fool. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, anyone at all. Ah! And at 8.30, Bob Hope hosts the Kraft 75th anniversary special. The entertainment starts at 7 with A Gift to Last, Sunday on CBC. Well, highlights in this basketball game are all wearing white. I guess we have to say that. Eh? I tell you, it'd be very tough. Uh, it'd be one of the shortest films ever to show the high, you know, the high points of the UBC first half. It's been a real tough one. What have you picked to show us, sir? Well, mostly I think we, we've got the two young gentlemen who have got those points, and and that's uh, Billy Luce and Bob Paris have done an excellent job here. We we pick up Bob Paris with the basketball. I think. What we can notice here is he uses a good change of pace dribble here to get the defense really off balance, then splits the defensive players. Most important, an important uh, offensive fundamental. Loose now gives us a good effort, but the ball doesn't come to us, gives us a second effort, which is so important in the game, and gets whacked here, knocked out of bounds a little bit. But those are the two gentlemen alone could be winning this basketball game. They're getting an awful lot of help from some other people, but they have done a great job. I was talking to an old friend of both of ours, 
a longtime senior executive and a great worker for basketball in Canada, Norm Globe, who's sitting over there behind us. And he says it's surprising. UBC, they're, they're almost frozen out there. Uh, yes. I, well, they, the game has gone out of hand for them. It's been a fast game, and uh, they don't want a fast basketball game. Well, the only loss for this Viking team this year was to the UBC Thunderbirds, and I guess they're still mad about that. We're going to be back with the second half of this game after we take this pause from the University of Victoria. The next time you give blood, bring a friend, bring your brother, or your brother-in-law. Bring the girl next door, or the girl who lives next door to her. Bring a soldier, bring a sailor, bring the boss, or the girls from work. The next time you give blood, bring a friend. Give blood. Be a friend for life. If you have four drinks every day from the time you leave school till the time you retire, you'll have blown about $75,000. And that may be the least of your problems. But don't take it from us. Take it from a pro. Too much drinking can make a mess of your life. Hi, this is Brian McFarland for Hockey Night in Canada with a reminder that you've got an extra hockey night coming up. That's on Tuesday when the NHL presents the 1978 All-Star Game from Buffalo. It's your opportunity to see the best NHL players in action in the same hockey game. Be sure to watch Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, when Hockey Night in Canada brings you the All-Star Game from Buffalo. Going somewhere? Leaving the country? Keep in touch with shortwave radio, Radio Canada International. We'd love to give you our frequencies, but we've got too many. We'll gladly send them to you, along with our free program schedule. Just write to Radio Canada International, Frequencies, Post Office Box 6000, Montreal, Quebec. Okay, here are your halftime statistics. Turnovers and rebounds, a big story. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, the rebounds, and then, of course, the number of shots that UVic has gotten at the basket. They got 41 shots to opposed to uh, 24, and then we see Lucid Paris have outscored UBC. Yes, they have 25 points between the two of them, and the Thunderbirds' team total is only 24. So we're ready to start the second half, 44 to 24, for the blue-clad University Pardon me, the white-clad University of Victoria Vikings against the blue-clad UBC Thunderbirds. Ted, one of the things about the game, 20 minutes, 20 points. It's not an impossible situation. It becomes a matter of time eventually. Well, the first shot didn't work for the Vikings that time, which may or may not mean something as time goes by. Here's Chris Crumpy as Pete Mullins has his starters out there again. Long one-hander, way wide. Dalsetti, number 33, is in there. He is the only man in the game with three fouls so far. Loose over to Hyde Lay. It's a well-known name here in Vancouver Island in sports. Loose, the top man in the game with 15 points. And the guy with the ball right now, Rob Paris, has 10-12. First shot again in this half. He hit as he did in the first half. He really loosens him up with his outside shoot. Got a little bit of a change there. They double up on the ball. That's one of the first times they've done that up with the ball. There's Ken Shields, and Ken wanted me to make very sure to say hello for him and all the team to his mother, who's in hospital up in Trail, British Columbia. So hello, Mom. Tough time out of bounds, a little confusion as to which way the ball is going. You come up with new big basketball, and that's the way the game goes. So when you when you're hot, you're hot. You know, if things are going their way, they get all the breaks. That pass was supposed to be for Billy Luce, who couldn't get loose, but he did get the ball. And there's Dolph City. He is very smooth. 
uses all of his height very effectively. For 33, he came here to play with Ken Shields, who had coached him, of course, before at Laurentian University. Yes, Rennie has worked out with our national team. He's a very aggressive, tough young man. That's Alderman, who's the top man for UBC. His 10th point there. Look at Luce for that rebound. And he's deadly when he gets that ball. In. Well, we showed that on that highlights, him getting that rebound. He got fouled the time on the highlights, but right now he just really went up and stuck it in there. It's just a tough player. The only guy really doing anything, Mark Adelman, a 19-year-old from Vancouver. Six feet, seven inches tall. That's nowhere near his full body weight yet. Still trying to say shake uh, Dolcetti loose again underneath that hoop. Yaremko is watching him in there. Have a look at that clock. It says 10 seconds. UBC rebound. UBC can't give up any second shots if they're going to get back in the ball game. They've, they've got to uh, give UVic one shot and then UBC's got to get the rebound. Nice screen there by Jolly. Taken down. There's the hoop. Follow up with Ian Hyde Lay. Good teamwork, good passing. Found the open man, hit the open man, put the ball up ahead. That double up we saw earlier just didn't, the uh, timing wasn't as good this time. 